All right, let's say you just want to play around with vocoder in real time just for the heck of it, or maybe you're doing some jazz that you want to have vocoder on. I don't know. All right, so we're going to add an audio track. We're going to capture our microphone input data here, okay? And then we're going to add another audio track. Now, we could we could do this a number of ways. We could put the uh, vocoder directly on the audio track and do it real time. Um, but just in case, I would recommend doing it this way, where you put the audio track onto a different uh, track, the uh, effects rather. Okay, we're going to insert soft synth reactor. And that way, when you record your data, you can record your actual live microphone sound and then you can still have that pure sound if you want to later on manipulate it in a different way. Uh, so this is just a, one way to do that using the patch points. Okay, so I've uh, I've in added the reactor track. And then of course now Razor is not going to do anything because I uh, need to add a MIDI track. Now because I added Razor already the MIDI track will have picked it up as the output device for that MIDI channel, or the or Omni in this case, all the channels are going right there to Razor. But um, now I have the synthesizer set up. I can go up here and select the vocoder. Okay. Now, um, it still needs to have the signal from the microphone routed to it. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to use uh, on this track, I'm going to use a send. Uh, I'm going to use patch point one. If you want to insert a patch point, you can just do insert send and you can add patch point, new patch point. Uh, I've already done a couple of patch points for this demonstration, so they're already there. Okay, so now I have the patch point sending information out. And then now I need to have the reactor collect that information. Patch point one, left mono. Now, I should have, <clears throat> excuse me, some information going into <clears throat> as I press my keyboard. The last thing I need to do is echo my channel. Yikes. Now, I'm echoing the channel. Now it's going into Razor. That's really loud. Okay. Um, so that's a way to do it in real time. Now, because of the demo uh, recording, <clears throat> my microphone is also going directly into the... Uh, video capture software so you're hearing that you're hearing my real voice as well as the amp the changed voice from the vocoder here let me turn that down a wee bit because it's really really loud okay and if i do that controlling a little bit of the input signal going into reactor now i can crank that back up to a little bit better signal level ow Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Okay, so <clears throat> now if I were to record both these tracks right now, it what it would record is only the sound of the microphone. If I want to record live to do what I'm doing here and record it in, in real time, I do need to add one more track for audio. Okay. And so this time, I will send this to patch point two, and I will pick up that information into in stereo because the uh, effect will be stereo. Now you can hear some distortion happening because of the complicated writing setup I have in my uh, DAW. So I do apologize for that. So now I'm gonna record my voice in two tracks as well as the output to the um, that fourth track. And I'm... Uh, and I'll record the MIDI data at the same time. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, that lamb was sure to go. All right, now I've captured all of that data. Again, it was unnecessary to capture both tracks here. Uh, this, sh this, if I solo, that should just be the um, uh, the vocal track.
yes, of course, it's not going to play that because it's in Reactor. If I pull that track down, though, if I pull this track out into a separate track and solo that. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, that lamb was sure to go. So that kind of made a recording of the mix of the original track and the, uh, the vocal. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, that lamb was sure to go. So that's just an, uh, an example of doing some uh, live playing with the, uh, the effects, if you prefer to do it that way, experimenting and recording it at the same time. Um, obviously, we get different results depending on what you're recording. So this, uh, we still have our original vocal track that I did in, in real time. We have the MIDI track I did in real time. And then this kind of blend of the, the effect with the actual voice coming from Reactor. And then this last track was just the effect coming out of Reactor. So, um, anyways, I hope this was helpful for some of you. I know this, this routing stuff is very complicated in um, Cakewalk Sonar. Um, I know some of the other DAWs are, it's a little bit simple. You just click one button and it, it will kind of automatically set up the track uh, for you when you're doing these kind of different routing methods. But it is confusing when you're dealing with both MIDI and audio signals at the same time. So you, you do have to think things through and, and figure out how you want your, uh, uh, you know, the audio routed and, and which data goes where and what and whatnot. So it is confusing, but uh, hopefully this helped you out a little bit. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.